It's bigger, but is it better? It looks the same from this angle, just a classic architectural masterpiece, but a different perspective always leads us to imagine more. Much more, and the big bubble you see here, originally designed in 86, but not really experienced to its full glory, well, only for a few, and until now. Sorry to ruin the moment of Tinker's masterpiece, and it is that for me, but it just didn't work. Not at first, not in the colder temps. See, I've lived in the Midwest my whole life. Our springs are really extended winters with 30s and 40s being a real thing. And a bubble this large, it cracked under the pressure of a runner's weight and those dropping temps. I can't imagine that fire drill to recall that many pairs before the internet. No, no, no thanks, I'm good. But as we all know, Nike weathered the storm by quickly re-engineering the rear air unit window in length and height to the design we know today. Synthetic suede completes the overlays around the entire upper front to back with a mesh material for the underlay base. Some are opposed to this because of its attraction to dirt, so I'd simply spray them with protectant if that's a concern. I've heard very mixed reactions that it feels cheap in some ways, not being actual suede, and maybe we're all a little spoiled by New Balance these days and some other Air Max 1 releases that have actual suede on the upper for the material. Others are perfectly okay with the upper because it's giving 1986. Listen, if you ask for an OG, you get just that, at least when it's done right by Nike. The toe box, that's another area of contention on the sneaker. Some feel it's way too boxy, it's way too wide. I'm empathetic to that, however, I don't see it as an issue whatsoever on this pair. I actually commend the craftsmanship on here because I didn't see any flaws or things that would really concern me with the sneaker. Another hit or miss for people, the thinner laces. I know some aren't a fan, so you know what? You can swap the laces out. That's a pretty easy fix itself. A silky nylon collar, gifts classy, and who can't appreciate that? A thinner interior, now that'll be a preference for some if you love or hate it. It's thinner, it's sleeker, yes, for the sock liner, that can also mean there's a little bit of slippage, but it hasn't been a concern, at least in my first try on. With a much bigger air unit comes a larger slope. It is a little bit more exaggerated. It certainly reminds me of the slope we see on an Air Max 270. And again, that's due to the larger rear air pocket. Nike wanted to be the best in performance and cushioning. Push the boundaries. And as they said, it's when runners push that technology gets pushed. Three times more cushioning than ever, at least for back then, with two separate air units in the forefoot and much more in the heel with a refined footbed to encase the foot with real arch support. To finish off with final details, Nike Air stamped on the insole, white on red. The size is present, as you can see here on the sock liner itself. We don't normally get that, so it is a nice switch up. And for the insole, it's not really thick, so thank goodness there's tons of cushioning. I know some people like to swap out insoles for any sneaker. Doesn't matter which pair, you're certainly free to do that. If you're enjoying the video so far, please be sure to hit the like button. I really appreciate it. It does far more than you can imagine for any creator on this platform. But I'm more curious to know, how does this stack up? I mean, what were your expectations to see the big bubble Air Max 1 return? And then based on what we actually received as consumers, do you feel as if Nike delivered? Do you think they fell short in some areas? Do you think they set a new bar of what we should consistently see from them when they bring back pairs? I mean, please let me know because personally from the actual construction to the outsole, it all works for me. It's one of the best releases I think we'll get for all of 2023. Yes, we're still early in the year, but I think this pair says a lot for itself. I mean, to my knowledge, no runners were actually harmed during the official release of the Air Max 1, March 26, 1987. Happy to know that, but more importantly, I'm happy to see it return. If you're enjoying the video, go ahead and be sure to hit the like button. I really appreciate it. And in the interest of time, the styling and on foot portion for this video will follow in a separate video very soon. What can we take away from the Air Max One Big Bubble? Well, three things. Number one, just do it. If someone seats you at the table to have the impact they believe only you can like no one else, 
aka Tinker Hatfield, believe in yourself enough to just go for it and please just do it. I mean, look what he accomplished. They truly thought Tinker had lost his mind putting visible air into a sneaker itself. Now, can you imagine today in 2023 with everything we've received in the world of sneakers from Tinker, anyone calling his designs bad? No, you can't because they appreciate you. They appreciate what you've done after the cheers. So just trust yourself. Number two, creativity is in every facet of life. If you simply open your mind and expand beyond what already exists. Frank Rudy brought aerospace ingenuity to footwear in 1977 when he presented the idea of air cushioning to Nike. Oh yeah, people thought him crazy too. The Tailwind saw a wide release in 1979, the start of air as we know it. Tinker found inspiration in a building turned inside out like never before and that led to the creation of the Nike Air Max 1. So do yourself a favor, look up from your phone long enough to see the world around you and build on that and whatever fills your mind. Number three, and this is a hard lesson to learn in life. People will equally praise you and tear you down all in the same breath. They beg for OG and then tear it to shreds the second it returns in its actual OG form and glory. I mean, even the box, it's facing criticism and it won't come for me. Let's just throw that out there. I'm a really big fan of the box itself and I understand some people really, really wanted the OG box. To be fair, the box isn't seen when worn on foot and quite honestly, we got something from the past done even better but with a brand new presentation that I think everyone can appreciate. Young, old, spanning the entire existence of the Air Max One line. Listen, I could go on and on and so many people already have on the greatness of the Air Max One and everything it led to, especially with Visible Air. We already know how monumental the Air Jordan 3 is in the entire history of sneakers, basketball, the culture, all of it. So with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'll have a follow-up for more of a real on-foot look, how I choose to style this pair, and I really appreciate you tuning into that video as well as having tuned into this one. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit the like button. Please consider subscribing, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. As always, act your age, not your shoe size. Peace.